uh, with Donnie, who is not here, but uh, um, but let's just uh, so what we thought we might do um, is have an ask me anything session about community and community metrics. So before you ask us anything, let us introduce ourselves. choose not to answer your question <laughs> if it is uh, untoward. Uh, but the other thing that's cool about an Ask Me Anything session is that the me is also you, so you can ask, you can also answer, and, and chime in on questions that are asked. Um, so Wait, what's our favorite dog? <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's a, that's that's a good fun. question. Um, and his name is Ember. He's a service dog for me. Uh, he's a merry little white dog mix. He's about as standard as is a family of us. He's an English Beagle, but he can work because he does all the work. He's just a little bit of a hard ass to work with. And he now has a Twitter account. Yeah, yeah. He has a Twitter account, so he could chat there and back. Yeah. And what is your name? <laughs> uh, Ember underscore dog is, is the Twitter handle. So the panel we thought was going to be was a community health team. And I'm here with some health team members. So is there other folks out there who have, who are trying to figure out how to kind of collect metrics on community? Who's trying to So 
Uh, as an individual, you probably either rec or consider yourself a member of multiple different communities, and hopefully those communities do get along. Uh, there are certainly communities where we have competing products. I mean, Public and Chef is a relatively good example, right? But we get along pretty well. <laughs> What's the name? <laughs> uh, and, and one of the things that I think, uh, and I can speak specifically to the configuration management space, right? One of the things that we do very well together is help organize rooms like this configuration uh, management room. We, we're organizing the configuration management camp in Ghent for two days together. What we like to do is bring our community as a whole together, the configuration management community, the infrastructure design community, because there's so much I think that the communities can learn from one another. I, th I think part of that too is just recognizing that, you know, at, at least in some communities like this, and what we do with config management camp, we're all trying to solve the same problem. So it's, it's more useful for us to work together and try and solve those problems together, even though, yeah, sure, we have competing products, but we're all asking the same questions. We're all trying to come to the same conclusion. So to work together furthers everybody's success. That topic actually came to lunch at the Block Space Campus Center on Friday. It was sort of like a roundtable conference. And uh, a lot of folks were saying, oh, how do we track across different communities and different people? And there were a lot of really interesting questions about just being able to work back and work together. Um, and I, don't, I didn't hear any women speak. So I was like a surprise guest. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm Enrique. I'm working in a company called Detergia, or Detergia, or whatever it could be said in English. Oh, you speak Spanish? <laughs> 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 like, this is so interesting. Why is it that you're the only guest speaker? That's right. Can we just ask them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not the guest speaker here. I, I, I want to do what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm let's answer. talk. <laughs> 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 so I want you to pitch me a tie or something on the way out. Okay, <laughs> how to do that without the slides or whatever, but... Anyway, what we are doing is provi providing metrics about a uh, uh, whole ecosystem around an open source community and open source development using open source tools because we've seen that for measuring open source, we use should use open source tools it's in the mind of the philosophy of the, of the idea. So we are doing business, doing open source for measuring open source. That's, that's all. On the good part, we are measuring not only commits, or activity, or number of developers. I think that could be easily done by GitHub or whatever tool you are using for, for doing that. But also the whole ecosystem, code review management, issue tracking system, and even the code review processes. How fast are you code reviewing? What are the bottlenecks in the code review process? Even the mailing list, what are the discussions in the mailing list? What are the biggest discussions or even the deepest threats? And we are also providing the, the ecosystem in terms of, for example, a developer to have a affiliation in the code review process or even in the source code management system, but to have another identity in the, in the mailing list. But at the end, we can gather the data and then we can provide, okay, this, this guy is more active, for example, in the mailing list than even in the code <coughs> base system. The good thing from that is that we can say, okay, maybe if you are only measuring the number of commits, the founder of the project probably is the top guy, or even has disappeared nowadays, because if you look maybe three months ago, he's not making any commits. So you can say, okay, this guy is no one, but you go to the uh, mailing list. This guy is the one that is also driving the community, because you say, okay, maybe we have invested in this <laughs> or in this project. So this is more or less what we do. I know Puppet <laughs> knows where, know us very well, right? <laughs> yeah, we use, we use Dunkle and open Dunkle in our code and as do a lot of other big projects that are working back. So. so we are open to any uh, question you have. <laughs> <laughs> this is for free now. <laughs> so take your time. <laughs> All the code's out there in their repository. It's easy to have a look at it. We are as so much transparent as we can and as we want. Uh, so you can see all. Yes?
So, so the two part question, I'll repeat the question and we'll throw the answer out there. The first, the first part was how you measure the health of a community. And the second part was, um, are there ways that you can capture and measure it? Um, the diversity within your community of new ideas and different things, right? <coughs> I think it depends a lot of the, of the community of the project itself. Uh, I remember the first plus metrics meeting, plus community metrics we did in Portland. I, I remember, I think it was Simon Fitz that he said that something about your community or your project becomes what you measure. I mean, if you're only measuring things like, for example, I don't know, number of commits, maybe your, if your health, self, if the healthy concept for your community or for your project is, I want as much, as many commits as possible. That could be your indicator of metric, but at the end you're having some competition about how I can make better bots to make more commits. Maybe the quality of the commits is not that good. I mean, so each community, each project has their own concept of healthy, I think. In the terms of diversity, it also depends a lot of, again, the project. I think it's a, from my point of view, personal point of view. I think diversity is a key for open source or any project to, to success. I mean, if, if the project is only dri driven by one developer or by one company. It's, I remember yesterday talking about this all concept about the bug trick or something like that. If that the developer disappear or either the company is taken by another one and close the project, the project is almost dead. Even being open source, it depends a lot of how many people is taking care of that project. So I think diversity <coughs> is good. And also participation in as much, as many projects as possible is good, but it depends on how much free time or spare time you have for that. easily can measure the amount of contribution that's made to a particular set of work or a particular project. But I also like to look at what other things are being built around that project or that support of that project in terms of the development of those sorts of projects as well. Because I think that that also speaks to, you know, there's a core of people that care about this framework and then maybe there are more people that are using it and building additional tooling around that. And it's, it's very also very interesting to watch how um, over time some of that tooling will get built sort of on the around a project and then be brought into the main line of that project and then sort of built in to support the whole project. Great, thank you. So so um, we have a handful of people here from different different communities that wanna say. So this community is um, from one telepathic entity that takes care of the development of the open source folks. Um, we see that has a lot of activity from no code put into Java to positive within the community. This is not something we're interested in trying. So we talked to a few people and they they feel a lot of like this kind of thing is is not something we're interested in trying. So we have a few more folks that wanted to say something about open source as well. Um, so thank you for your participation. Um, this is just a quick survey. So we have about 10 minutes left. So if there's a question you'd like to ask, please put it in the chat box. That, that point, remember, is for, for a customer. We, we did a metric that is the anti-community, the measuring the anti-community. That means, particularly if a newcomer arrives to the project and submit a patch, for example, okay, I, I think I can, can, I can fix this, this area of my project. So I submit a patch for there. And then you get, okay, review your code, but maybe it's not following our guidelines, or maybe it's, I don't like how you are solving it. And how many people is not, Long, not in, not again submitting the patch. So it's the anti community. How many people are you losing to have a new idea? And it was so wonderful when they discovered after a year they have lost something like 400 people, never come back to the project. So I think that's an indicator. Wait, Sasha, yes.
<laughs> so sentiment analysis is basically where you look at the words and you look at, you know, so a word like, like somebody uses the word hate, that's a, a negative word, and you say love, that's a positive word, then they get kind of a general feel for, for whether people are talking about positive things or negative things, and you can kind of see, yes, I want to add an E to sentiment. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have not I can done show that. You that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer your question. <laughs> Our politicians are all open source, free, even the database dump. Are free. So go yeah, to our, our GitHub. So you can summarize <laughs> and publish it in a blog post afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we do. So at Pebble Labs, um, so again, all of our metrics are completely public, so people can go and they can look at them. So that's public. Um, uh, we also do a monthly blog post. The blog post, to be honest, is less focused on the numbers and more, more focused on recognizing contributions. So the blog post itself is not a direct, you know, this is what we saw on the metric dashboard. It's, it's more of an interpretation, and we highlight key contributors, um, not necessarily the, the top three, but the three that we felt had the most significant contributions, and we do a human filtering on the, on the metric. Um, but we do that once, we do the blog post once a month. What we do is with our sort of our limited open source community, um, we try to join every week with the community and haven't put a whole lot of in-depth sort of metrics into the community. Yeah, actually, nothing too hard, of course. <laughs> That's why we are doing it on that. <laughs> <laughs> we do visuals. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's always visualization. <laughs> Anyone has a laptop there? Or one <laughs> <laughs> Group in Spain is called Libertas.org. They have published some papers about uh, research activity and even people becoming 
what we call the core developers to regular and casual developers. So how, when, when do you come, do you became from a casual developer, someone that is making probably a commit or a patch, things like that, once a week or once a month to, okay, 80% of the code is done by us. That's not the core developer. So yes, we have some meetings, for example, about demography, about how people are leaving the project and coming back and things like that. So we, we need to get some policy about that. I think it's also an interesting question that I was thinking about a little bit earlier about why are so many metrics so focused on population? Yes. Right? And when we talk about community, uh, the community exists uh, outside of the metrics that we use. Right? So while the contributors are absolutely a, an interesting facet of the community, very important facet, I think there has been some research, for example, from this group in, in Madrid about, for example, how long does it take from a, to a topic appears in the mailing list, for example, we need this new feature in our product, or we should take care of security, to there is a commit in the GIT about we are improving security. So that kind of me metric can be tracked. It's part of the research for the future, but I think it would be interesting to know how how innovative or, or how well we are taking care of the innovation from the discussion in the mailing list, for example, or the RFP or things like that. Well, I, I can talk for just a minute about this. These are the, the puppet metrics, and you can see they're they're all public. We we do focus a lot. Um, so for me, being you know sort of the community person working on these, the the most important thing for for me is looking at sort of what the people are doing. So. All the, all the data is focused on actual participation from people. So it's not just people who've joined a mailing list, it's people who've actually posted something on the mailing list, for example. Um, but you know, our, our metrics right now, I mean, health-wise, health the community seems to, be, seems to be growing, people seem to be happy. Um, you know, you, we, we do see a few interesting things like the, the mailing lists have sort of flatlined over the last couple of years. Uh, one of the things we attribute that to is the fact that we launched our second Q&A site, which is a little more friendly to new users. So you can see we had a tremendous amount of growth in the, um, the Q&A site, which led to more of a flatlining of the, the metrics. So we saw that as a trend. What about the um, places you travel to attend? I mean, there's a big chart that says in 2006, we made the other 2,000 posts. Yep. So this is a long-term thing. This is not two months, three months. Yeah, for sure. And then on the module authors, you can I see where we. I promise you can zoom in on two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did somebody say Jonathan? I don't know. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. If you want to be generous. <laughs> fixing that right now. <laughs> um, Blame on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Did that answer your question about like trends, health? So these aren't currently tracked metrics like this. Uh, this 
we did or when we did. go to bitergia.com, you can see different dashboards and every dashboard is in has its own GitHub ac account so you can play with the data. Even I am sure you can provide better visualization than us, but it's up to you. Again, it's open source, you, uh, you can play with it. And you could see a lot of difference between each community, yeah, for example. I mean, some communities are focused on knowing who are the top 10 uh, mailing list participants. And other ones don't want that because that creates some kind of competition and giving, le giving less quality. So I mean, it's important to identify what are the meaningful metrics for your community. And each community is quite different. And regarding the about this GitHub page, I remember uh, last year in Poland there was uh, um, clubs uh, providing the activity in source forks and, and several forges. And it was like increasing, 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 and then almost disappeared. And do you know what happened in the top position? GitHub appears in the bottom. So it was like, okay, GitHub has changed a lot. But the, the question here is, and maybe it's hard to say that way because I'm not against GitHub at all and I think it's quite good and important. But how long will GitHub have uh, long, I mean? Because we, we, we are always thinking about, okay, if I want to develop, I have to take account GitHub. But there are a lot of people using, for example, Bitbucket. Any of you are using Bitbucket? There is no one. Oh, I know Atlassian has very good code. But also are based on JIT. The good thing is everyone is using a, is based on an open source technology. From our point of view, providing metrics based on open source technology means that maybe someone can take our technology and provide a better service. Even GitHub and can use our <coughs> technology and incorporate the metrics there. So I think we are, the good thing is we are living in the JIT age. That's the good thing. We have evolved from CVS. I don't know how many of you remember that ages. Then we came to Subversion. Do you remember? Oh, that was wonderful. And then JIT appeared. Okay? So 
who knows what's next. Maybe it's not <coughs> maybe Mick had moved to the ball to whatever third coach management is gonna appear in the market. The good thing is that you have some metrics that could be measured. our point of view and regarding how we measure metrics, the, the we have one metric regarding about activity by time zone. It depends a lot also in the community. I mean, if you have some kind of, uh, not tracking, I mean, having all those mm, uh, contributors registered with the location, you know, for example, in GitHub, you can say, okay, I'm living in this city or even in your, but in your mailing list, you cannot say that. But the th good thing is about, for example, activity by time zone. So it's more or less you can guess, okay, this is my Asia community, this is my Europe community, and this is my American, South American community, because they have di the different time zones, and you can see the decreasing and uh, increasing in activity there. So more or less, it's, it's one easy way. I mean, if you have all the location of the people, maybe you can uh, track things like, for example, contribution by API even in the just Discord account or things like that, that could be done. just about how you create that set. I mean, this is the repositories or the people that are contributing are from this set, so I can get only the measures and the metrics from this set and you can compare with them. I mean, you already have a lot of information. I mean, one of the good things about open source project is you are being transparent. I think that's the good thing. You are, well, you are supposed to be as much transparent as possible. <laughs> I mean, so the data is already there. It's how you create the sets and you measure that set of information.
but what about um, the local user base? Many of them are on meetup.com, but not all of them, right? And meetup.com gives you a very easy way to reach this out. What's the health of the community? Need to be tested. So what we see is that meetup groups that are meeting on a regular basis are talking about these particular topics. But the meetups that I can see on meetup.com are then meetups that are organized by meetup, of course, right? And certainly, who organizes the meetup or goes to a meetup that is not on meetup.com? <laughs> right? So a good 20%, maybe. Um, it's it's just not true. It's way less than that. <laughs> <laughs> you can always wake up the so one. Like, um, so that can be that can be difficult as well. Certainly, um, It's quite similar what we do, for example, with the Stack Overflow, so that it's not hosted by the customer or whatever. Like even the tools that are <coughs> relying on other customers. So by the end, it's we can scrap it or we can use their API or we can just know what's happening in the area. For example, in the Stack Overflow, you can say, yeah, I, I would like to follow or get the metrics from all the conversations that use this hashtag, so I can follow him. But maybe. Uh, but that was mentioned before about Puppet, uh, uh, Puppet sorry, about Meetup. <coughs> I remember discussing this about there are two kinds of parts of the community. There is the online community. I mean, everything that you can track by activity in a website. I mean, that's GitHub or mailing list or even the Stack Overflow Stack or, or whatever. And this, th this is the offline community. It's the people that is going to the meetups or the, the events that are happening outside your control environment in the web. And that's also very interesting to be measured. We are s starting to do some things about meetup, about this kind of metrics, and it's quite interesting seeing, I don't know how many of you organize a meetup, but how many people is going to the meetup really, when you are setting up everything and you get 100 people, then you go there, it's like 55 people. And it's always the same people that say, hey, I'm going to be there, and never appear. Are the ghosts of your meetup, I, I say <laughs> several times. So that's the thing, you can measure that and maybe send them an email, okay, why are you not coming? Because you are always registering, maybe you are interested in our topic and you are not coming. So that's taking care of your community even when they are not in your website. Uh, and they are not making code, maybe. <laughs> I have with UX, UX on asking if we can see how it has been the contribution for a long time contributor against a newcomer, oh how he per perceived the community. <laughs> Uh, 
I assume that maybe he's trying to communicate to me like he's he's uh, uh, mentioned before about I want to provide something to the community so you can identify who is who wants to contribute and never come back so you can clearly his perception is this community is bad because it's not taking care of me and it's not taking care of my program so okay I'm going away if they are becoming contributors okay the path is accepted or even if it's rejected you go again and try again that's that's a good sign off and then from there is if you are only casual developer you can say or casual contributor even to the mailing list you can identify if it's evolving in the community or just okay i'm participating but if, if it's engaged to participate more that's also a good indicator just thinking aloud how to measure that thing without asking for it
People doing things with you, more or less, with your project, with your idea, whatever. So at the end, it's people spending part of their life with you. So you have to take care of them as if they were your friends or whatever. But if you, how you treat your people or the people that is taking care of you, that's how you are going to take care of the community. So that that, that will be. How do you measure that? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you have to do some work on psychology, psychology, something like that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, guys. I don't know what Donnie was going to say, but I thought this was a very interesting uh, hour, so... <laughs>